Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from IT Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab, the Red Alert Labs, the video number 114. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been working now for 25 videos on discussing how we can protect ourselves against cyber security attacks by implementing uh, the documentation of CIS Critical Security Controls version 8 which is uh, a documentation provided by Center for Internet Security Organization which is an unprofitable organization aiming to uh, uh, issue and uh, publish documentations uh, concerning uh, securing of different applications different operating systems and different networks so uh, to protect yourself against cyber security attacks there is 18 points uh, uh, that was uh, uh, stated in this documentation we have discussed until now uh, 16 points we have stopped the last time at point number 16 which was uh, talking about, about uh, application security control okay or, or application software security control here uh, we have discussed in the previous video that we should protect or we should secure our applications not from the point of configuration we should secure the configuration of our applications we have said before securing here means hardening the configuration of different applications but this was not the point the point that we are talking about today or from the previous video application security or application software security controls here we are discussing the securing of the design of the application and the programming language of the application so this is uh, from the beginning uh, of uh, creating the application the application should be designed according to uh, a known framework okay there is a lot of frameworks that uh, and a software developer can use to create a secure design of his application and actually uh, not only this also we should also uh, the application or the software developer should also uh, 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 not only use a framework but to apply certain steps to make sure that his uh, application is secure so for example his application or uh, application should include a logging uh, f f uh, logging uh, feature and should also include an encryption feature if this is uh, an application that will con contain sensitive data an application should uh, uh, should for example have an authentication feature that is that is used to authenticate users to uh, use a certain or to use this application so there is a lot of things to secure an application first you need or the software developer because this is uh, focusing on software developers software developers should use a known framework or known frameworks that these frameworks or these frameworks uh, 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 focus on uh, 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 security and most of the known frameworks focus on security one of these uh, uh, frameworks for designing applications is OWASP or uh, National Institute and Standards uh, and Technology for uh, this is an organization and the CIS also have some frameworks to use or software developers can use to create secure applications so the previous or the previous video we have been talking about how a software developer should focus on using secure frameworks uh, or frameworks uh, he should focus on uh, that his application should include some features that is very very critical to secure his application logging feature uh, to so we can use to uh, monitor the application and to hold accountability for uh, some users that are working on the application so anyway today uh, we will discuss the CIS application security controls what are the recommendations for uh, this or, or for uh, uh, what the CIS stated that how you can secure your application from the beginning when you are designing it and when you are uh, coding it when you are when you are making the, or when you are writing the programming language for the software this programming language should be secure or you should write the program with a programming language 
okay, that should focus on not only providing uh, features uh, for the application, but to secure the application. So we should, uh, in the programming language, focus on uh, providing features to be used in the application and to provide security for the application. Okay. So today we will discuss about nine points that the CIS, CIS stated how to uh, secure your application design and programming language. And by the way, this is one of the famous frameworks. So a software developer can use the CIS framework or he could use uh, OWASP framework or to use the National Institution uh, of uh, National Institution and Standards and Technology. Okay, these are three frameworks that a software developer can use to secure his application design and coding. Okay, so let's talk about the first point. Establish and maintain a secure application development process. Here is saying that establish and maintain a secure application development process in the process uh, address such items as secure application design standards, secure coding practices, developer training, vulnerability management, security of third party codes, and application security testing processes. So here you should have a process or a complete process uh, to secure your, your application from the beginning, from the design phase, from the coding phase. Uh, uh, also, when you are uh, developing your software, you should focus on vulnerability management to test uh, the vulnerabilities in your uh, program okay and fix these vulnerabilities and to teach your developers how they can uh, or give them training sessions on how they should uh, secure their application okay focusing on uh, famous vulnerabilities in different uh, coding applications or different uh, or different applications they should focus on developer training and also you should focus on application security testing you should test it not test not testing only to uh, uh, know if if it is working properly or not but to test the security of the application so the first point in, in short he's saying that you should adapt or you should uh, work with a known or a famous framework so the framework uh, the developer will use to design and code his program will include all of these features it will talk about uh, st design standards, uh, secure coding practices, okay, uh, it will ha ha also not only secure coding practices and design, but after that, after applying this framework, you can use tools to scan for vulnerability uh, in this software and to uh, test its security features. Anyway, I think this point is focusing on a framework, to use a secure framework for design and coding. The first point. The second point, establish and maintain a process to accept and address software vulnerabilities. Establish and maintain a process to adapt and address reports of software vulnerabilities, including providing a mean for external editing to report. This process is to include such items as vulnerability handling policy and identify reporting process, responsible party for handling vulnerability reports. So here, the second point is to have a vulnerability plan if there is a vulnerability who will uh, uh, address this vulnerability what are the teams that we responsible for handling this vulnerability okay to document this vulnerability so you should have a vulnerability process for your software when it is in the developing phase or in the design phase okay so here is sh you should focus on this one he's saying here the process is to include vulnerability handling policy that identifies reporting process responsible parties for handling vulnerability reports and the process for intake assignment redemption and redemption testing so this is to have a vulnerability plan or a vulnerability process okay what we should do when we have a vulnerability okay who will uh, fix this vulnerability what are the teams responsible for fixing the vulnerability? How much time we have to uh, fix this vulnerability? Uh, after doing all of this, we should document the vulnerability uh, discovery and testing. Okay, this all of this should be done. So we should have a secure application development process. This includes having a secure code, secure design, uh, sec uh, to have a vulnerability system, uh, to test security codes and to have a plan or to have a vulnerability plan process okay this is point number two point number three to perform root cause analysis on security vulnerabilities so 
here we should not only when we uh, discover a vulnerability not to fix it but to know the root causes of it so we can uh, see a vulnerability and fix it but we, we did we don't know the cause of this vulnerability so this is the uh, uh, the good thing to do not to remedy vulnerabilities but to know the root cause of the vulnerabilities okay this is point number three perform root analysis on security vulnerabilities when reviewing vulnerabilities root cause analysis is the task of evaluating underlying issues that create vulnerabilities in code in the programming code and allows development teams to move beyond just fixing individual vulnerabilities as they rise not to fix the vulnerability but to make sure it will not happen again okay because you can fix this vulnerability now by a patch or by a code but the root cause is still there and the remedy or, or the vulnerability will appear again okay this is one point to have a root cause analysis by the way in point number two uh, we should also when we uh, have a vulnerability or we show a vulnerability we need to make it a measure or to give it some uh, uh, metric for example is the vulnerability high or medium or low what is the time that we need to fix this vulnerability so for example some vulnerabilities can should be fixed now because they are high some of them are low so it's not uh, or they, they will not do damage or they will not do something to f to the software or medium so we should give a metric or to give a, a measure for the vulnerabilities that we discover okay so this point we should f uh, I forgot to say in point number two we have discussed point number three point number four establish and maintain an inventory of third-party software components so sometimes uh, when a software developer is uh, uh, developing an application he is using third-party components so the software is not only uh, written by code but some uh, components of the software developed are from ready-made codes or ready-made softwares so we should list these ready-made softwares or third-party software components and we should focus on uh, securing them so for example maybe i'm using a free third-party software components so i should be aware or should focus that these third-party software components are always secure and always updated so for example maybe i'm using a code or using a component uh, that is available on the internet okay and it is written by other software developers so i should uh, uh, focus or should uh, see that these third party software developers are securing their code or securing their software as well because it will be in uh, included within my software so i should also list these third party software components and make sure that they are uh, securing their code he's saying establish and maintain updated inventory of third party components used in development often referred to as a bill of materials so this is the material i am building my software on so my software is not only built by programming code but some ready-made components or ready-made code maybe okay so evaluate the list uh at least evaluate the list at least monthly to identify any changes or updates to these components and validate that the components is still supported here is saying what we mean by still supported that these third-party software components are updated by security updates and the code written or this software uh, third-party components that are written by a programming code their code is secure so we should know this we should evaluate this we should evaluate third-party software components we should see this maybe some of these components are expired or not working anymore or the software developers are not uh, uh, issuing uh, security uh, batches for it or are not uh, fixing the code maybe the company or the third party so, uh, third party software company is closed so they are not developing or not working on this software anymore so we should focus on this okay this is point number four let's go to point number five here he's saying that use up-to-date and trusted third-party software components so here i think this is related to the the previous point or point number four to have an inventory so first we know we should have an inventory of third-party software components to know them to list them okay so we can monitor these uh, third-party software components and there is any rouge third-party software component added 
or uh, uh, included in our software, uh, we can monitor it and uh, get it, or or we can uh, uh, see if there is any rouge component included in our software. Okay, so this is point number four. Point number five, we should use, as we said here, or we said my instead in the previous point, up to date and trusted third party software components. So we need to use up to date. Uh, third party software components, software components that are uh, regularly batched by security batches, their programming code is secure. So we should use trusted and updated third party software components. It's point number five. Point number six, establish and maintain a severity rating system and process for application vulnerability. Here he is saying that you need to have a severity rating system and process for application vulnerability that facilitates patronizing the order in which discovered vulnerabilities are fixed. So here, this is related to point number two, to have a vulnerability system, okay? And to rate the vulnerabilities, okay? And to see what vulnerabilities or to give them ranking to see what vulnerabilities should be fixed first, okay? And what can be delayed or what can be uh, 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 put it uh, in a queue or something or to wait some, some time for this okay so this process includes setting a minimum level of security acceptability for releasing code or application so maybe uh, if you are ranking the vulnerabilities if our software for example contains five high vulnerabilities and for example six medium vulnerabilities and one low vulnerability maybe uh, we can fix the five high vulnerabilities and it is acceptable for us to publish uh, the software uh, having six medium vulnerabilities and one low vulnerability. Maybe this is acceptable, okay? And this is will not affect the customer. So we need to have a ranking system for the vulnerabilities and to issue uh, a standard. Uh, uh, for example, what is acceptable for us uh, to publish. Can I publish a software that contains high vulnerability uh, points, uh, medium vulnerability points, low? Maybe I can uh, publish uh, software that contains medium vulnerabilities and low vulnerabilities. Okay, this is acceptable. So severity ratings being a systematic way of triggering vulnerabilities that improve risk management and helps ensure that the most severe bugs are fixed first. So this is the first thing you need to do to focus on fixing severe bugs. This is our the, the bugs that will do damage, okay? Maybe there is some medium or low that can be fixed later. They will be fixed anyway, but they can wait. So this is something we need to do to have a severity rating system to, to discover vulnerabilities and to give them rating. All of these points, by the way, uh, during the phase of uh, developing the application when you are designing the application when you are writing the application when you are uh, uh, putting features in your application okay so this is just to make a note point number seven to use the standard handling configuration templates for application infrastructure so you can use templates when you are designing your program or your software there is some templates or used or uh, or ready-made templates that you can use to uh, develop your software and these templates are uh, contains uh, hardening steps for example use the standard industry commander hardening configuration templates for application infrastructure components so there is some templates that they are made specifically to address security things to add ad address security issues so for example maybe there is a programming template that it is written so uh, software developers can use and uh, this template addresses security issues so you should use them i don't know actually uh, how where they are located but i think it is there because it is here it is stated okay this includes underlying servers database and web servers that applies to cloud containers platform as a service components and SaaS components do not allow in-house developed software to weaken configuration hardening okay so you need to use standard hardening configuration templates maybe uh, there is some w websites that uh, that 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 software de so software developers can uh, access and get standard hardening configuration templates okay so this is this is there 
okay and this is point number seven point number eight he's saying here you should or the software developers should uh, separate production and non-production systems so in uh, in the development phase they have something like a testing uh, system or a, a, an environment for testing the software and there is an environment for applying the software there is a production and non-production system so this should be separated the training or the testing lab should be uh, separated from the production lab okay this is what he is saying to separate production and non-production systems not to include them in one place okay because the testing we can in the testing environment we are doing a lot of things okay and it is vulnerable as for the production this is the final phase it should be secure and should be working and should be our uh, our uh, our focus because this is what will appear for the customer okay so this is point number eight point number nine here is saying train developers in application security concepts and secure coding so this is like give them a training training how they can uh, apply security concepts and security secure coding when they are coding their uh, their uh, program they should use secure codes not to use a uh, programming code or codes that are vulnerable or can be hacked or can be tweaked okay they should give, give them training about this okay if you are in-house in developed software by the way all of these points are for or some of them are for in-house developed software okay so this is you should focus on as for uh, third-party software or you are purchasing a software then the the vendor of this software should in, should use these steps or you should ensure that he is using these steps okay this is point number nine point number ten apply secure design principles and application architectures again he is, is focusing here on using a secure framework okay a secure apply secure design principles and application architectures secure design principles include the concept at least least leverage and enforcing meditation to validate every operation that user makes so here remember that i have talked about some points here these are some principles for example i i have discussed before about nine concepts okay to have let me get further here here when you are designing the application you should have completeness check feature validity check feature identification feature classification feature logging feature encryption feature authentication feature access controls feature input controls feature so all of these will assure that you have a secure design okay the the, the application should log what happens in it should encrypt sensitive data to authenticate users created within the application should have access controls to control what users can say or or can do input controls users should input only uh, fields allowed by the application classification of data the application should classify the data to know which data is sensitive or not identification of the user used uh, side by side with authentication validity check of the data completeness of the data so all of these are things you should use let me go further here you should use to have just one minute guys sorry here should we use to have a secure design principle so these are secure designs or security controls to design a good application okay let's wait for a moment here so here this is point number 10 okay for example maybe also when you are uh, designing you should not uh, leave uh, unprotected ports and services removing unnecessary programs and files renaming or removing default accounts most of the applications have default accounts with default naming and default passwords this can be uh, tweaked okay if you, if you are in-house developed developed uh, application Okay, this is point number 10 then point number 11 leverage vetted vetted modules or services for application security components here he's saying that you should use uh, some ready-made uh, modules 
to increase your application security component something like templates but here you can use ready-made identity management components encryption components audit and logging components so you can use ready-made components to uh, have a good identity management system for your application a good encryption system for your application auditing and log application or auditing and log feature so these are ready-made features that developers can use to increase the security of their application so they can use ready-made uh, templates to secure their code and ready-made components to uh, to add security features to their software like identity management so they don't need to uh, program an identity management system or to program an encryption system or to uh, program an audit and logging system these are made use platform features in critical security functions will reduce developers work overload and minimize the likelihood of design or implement errors modern operating systems like windows for example provide effective mechanism for identification authentication and authorization and make this mechanism available to applications so these are ready-made mechanism so you can use a ready-made mechanism for identity management of your application use a ready-made mechanism for encryption of your uh, application R use a ready-made mechanism for audit and logging so these are available for the software developers so he will not invent the wheel there is ready-made things he can use or ready-made uh, uh, components that will help him to secure his application there are ready-made programming code there are ready-made framework that he sh he should follow to have a secure design of his application and there are ready-made mechanism that will help him to uh, authenticate or to uh, have a good authentication system and a, go a good identity management system and a good encryption system and a good auditing and logging system okay so these are all should be uh, thought uh, truly when you are designing an application you should uh, uh, focus on uh, 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 writing the program in a secure code uh, designing it uh, in a certain design in including logging uh, feature including ad identification management system feature and all of these and this uh, he will not write it or he will not uh, program it they are ready made okay this is point number 11 Point number 12, implement code level security checks. Apply static and dynamic analysis tools within the application lifecycle to verify that secure code practicing are being followed. So you should make regular checks on your programming code. Make security level checks or, or to make programming code level security checks. Check your programming code language every now and then to see if there is any uh, weakness in it and uh, edit it or change it maybe there is some tools to do this i am not a software developer okay this is point number 12. point number 13 conduct application penetration testing so this uh, a type of testing to uh, to test if you can hack the application and this it use authentication penetration testing also there is two types of penetration to penetrate the software through c weak uh, spots in the programming code or to hack the application through hacking the authentication system of the application so there is an, an authentication system for, for the application to authenticate users to access the application or the software so he's saying that authentication penetration testing is better and suited for finding business logic vulnerabilities than code scanning and automated security testing so here he is focusing on to make a penetration testing using authentication penetration okay to find a way to authenticate a hacker or to authenticate uh, an outside account to authenticate it to the application and begin working with the application okay this is something like a hacker also using uh, uh, an unprotected account on active directory for example to hack it and use it to authenticate him th himself to the domain and begin hacking the environment so this is something similar okay and this is point number 13 point number 14 conduct threat modeling threat modeling is the process of identifying and addressing application security design flows within a design before code is created so here is telling us that uh, the development or the software development phase begins with designing the application then writing the code or the programming code to apply this design so you design the program or design the application first 
okay we have said that when our designing we need to take into consideration uh, a lot of things the 12 points to that we have we said before or the nine points to have logging feature to have identification feature to, this is the design phase then to apply this design need to write a code to apply this design so he's saying here we should conduct threat modeling in the design phase not the code or the programming code phase. it is conducted through specially trained individuals who evaluate the application design and gauge security risk for each entry point and access level the goal is to map out the application architecture and infrastructure in a structured way to understand its weakness so i think this is you need to conduct or to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to get an it audit maybe or software audit for example a software developer auditors to uh, to audit the application design and the application programming code so these are 14 points uh, by the CIS you need to take into consideration if you are uh, an organization that is developing in-house application so in short you need to have a secure framework used to design your software to use a secure programming code to uh, uh, include some application security controls in your application or your developed application your application should have the logging feature should have the identification management feature the authentication feature the logging feature uh, the encryption feature the validity check feature all of these so these are these 14 points are focusing or it is directed mainly to software developers but you should uh, as an IT know these features because this will help you to choose which applications you should purchase if you are uh, uh, in in a situation that you are choosing which application is secure you should know these features to, and apply them to the application that you are uh, purchasing so this is very very critical point not uh, only to uh, uh, or this is not directed to software developers maybe you are an IT in a company that use software developers to develop in-house application so maybe you are uh, uh, maybe interested to know all of these things but even if you, your company doesn't have in-house developed software and you are purchasing uh, softwares from outside or from third party then you should uh, uh, tell them or you should see if they are applying this security uh, uh, application security software uh, controls because on on these features you will uh, take a decision which application you should purchase okay so again there is a lot of steps here we have discussed in the previous video uh, a part of it and today we have discussed about 14 points i need also just to take a moment to see if i have missed something here so i think it's application design security features let's see the the i think this is point number maybe this one okay the last point okay anyway so uh, this uh, concludes for the point of application software uh, security controls by the cis so this is a framework you can use this framework it's not actually a framework it is some uh, application security controls there is another uh, framework for the cis on how to use uh, a programming or secure programming code okay and to use uh, a design it also uh, recommend a software design but this is not included here these are the steps or these are the security controls there is a, a model let me show you this pdf or let me show you the uh, framework for designing for software developers there is something called safe let me go to this controls i think for the cis it's called safe code application software this is let me show you here this is the uh, software okay how to use this paper so this is how you can design okay let's go further here this is how to design a safe code so this is here some steps and points okay okay this is some steps and points okay and things you can go with okay but I think they are the same anyway so 
this is uh, concludes for our video today hope this video will be informative for you all and thank you all for viewing thank you so much